Do you fight for what is right or do you write your heart that fights? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Before Christian missionaries arrived in Alaska in 1879, there was a bitter war between the Tlingit and Sitka tribes. They were all great fighters and pretty evenly matched. So they fought all summer, sometimes undercover, sometimes in the open, watching for every chance to fire a shot. It got so bad that none of the women dared venture outside the salmon streams or berry fields to get their winter stock of food. As the winter approached, one of the Tlingit chiefs came out of his blockhouse fort into an open space midway between their fortified camps. He shouted that he wished to speak to the leader of the Sitkas. When the Sitka chief appeared, the Tlingit chief said, My people are hungry. They dare not go to the salmon streams or berry fields for winter supplies. And if this war goes on much longer, most of my people will die of hunger. We have fought long enough. Let us make peace. You brave Sitka warriors, go home, and we will go home, and we will all set out to dry salmon and berries before it is too late. The Sitka chief replied, You may well say, let us stop fighting when you have had the best of it. You have killed ten more of my tribe than we have killed of yours. Give us ten Thinkit warriors to balance our blood account. Then, and not till then, will we make peace and go home. Very well, replied the Thinkit chief. You know my rank. You know that I am worth ten men and more. Take me and make peace. The Sitka chief promptly accepted the offer. The Thinkit chief stepped forward and was shot down in front of the warriors on both sides. Peace was thus established and everyone hurried home to gather their supplies for the winter. That Linkit chief literally gave himself as a sacrifice for his people. He died that they might live. Therefore, when missionaries came to Alaska telling how Jesus died that we might live, they had no trouble accepting it. They knew that they had sinned against the Holy God. They knew that they were at war with Him. So when they heard that Jesus, the chief of all chiefs, the maker of all the world, gave His life, to balance our blood account with God, many of them put their trust in Christ and began to follow Him as their chief. In today's short first reading, Paul appeals to the Colossians to keep following Jesus, who has reconciled them to Him through His death. As we all know, the first Christians were composed of Jews and Gentiles or pagans who came to unity by His death on the cross. Paul's letter to the Ephesians beautifully puts it as well. For he is our peace, in his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. We reflect today on our relationships. Peace in our hearts starts with our recognition that Jesus came to change our mindset from looking at things solely from a human perspective to a spiritual one where God's commandment of love must dominate our existence. For true faith can only thrive in an atmosphere of love, and peace and joy will only flourish when love is given without expecting anything in return. This state of peace and reconciliation can only be sustained if, as Paul says, you persevere in the faith, firmly grounded, stable, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. We must all remain faithful to the gospel message by becoming instruments of peace and reconciliation to those who remain divided and broken. If we ourselves are broken, we must then pray harder and persevere to truly listen to the Lord's voice in our hearts. While the devil's voice provokes us to selfishness, revenge, hatred, unforgiveness, God's voice is one of peace and love. James tells us, a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Indeed, brothers and sisters, our holiness journey will be easier and faster if we shoot down the wall of stubborn insistence to fight and be right, and instead look for ways to extend our hand of peace. As the song goes, let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, 
If peace needs to begin with me, show me the way, melt my heart, and fill me with your Holy Spirit, so that I may extend this peace to all. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.